So the candidates are coming up and I'm here with Magnus Carlsen to ask his views on uh, what's going to happen and maybe to make some predictions. Magnus, are you excited to watch the tournament? Yeah, I mean, <laughs> I'm, I'm always excited to, to watch the, the candidates. Before we dive in with the specific players, uh, what are your views? Is it going to be a close one? Is there going to be a runaway winner? That's very hard to say. There are usually more decisive games at the candidates tournament than at other uh, like tournaments with a uh, similar level of players and that's obviously because at least usually only first place uh, matters makes the tournaments quite ex quite exciting yeah and it's one of the youngest candidates uh, ever like do you think that's going to play a role as well in the decisiveness uh, of the event i think there are a lot of very good players but yeah some of the youngsters are still fairly volatile so yeah i think it certainly matters Okay, so today we're going to be ranking the eight players in different categories, uh, making some predictions along the way. You mentioned some of them uh, yourself already, but here we go, Magnus. We have the eight players for you. We're going to start with Alareza Ferruja. I quite like what I saw from Alareza in Tata this year. He did quite well, uh, reached the final against me, forced a, um, forced a reset there in the final as well. And like, honestly, like he was the closest to beat me in freestyle chess as well. So I am a uh, Alreza true believer, uh, but I think for now we'll put him in the will do well category, uh, which I think is um, reasonable considering the difficulties he had the last time. Fair enough. And uh, now it's the turn of Jan Nepomnishi. He's won the candidates twice in a row, uh, two-time world championship uh, challenger. What do you make of his chances for third time lucky? or three in a row. So Jan really hasn't shown much the last few years except for the candidates. Um, he shows flashes here and there. At the moment, I'm not convinced, but I think he has enough pedigree to be in the top, con top contender group, considering he's won Western Raw. Okay, you feel he's, he saves his best for this specific tournament? I think he saves his best for sure. He's also, you know, had circumstances with him both both times, which is, you know, uh, which is fair enough. Mm -hmm. Okay, now it's one of the uh, youngsters that you mentioned, Gukesh. What do you make of his first shot at the candidates? Is it going to go well? For Gukesh, it's very hard to say. I cannot imagine him winning, but I could see him being anywhere from like plus two to minus five. I think he will certainly win at least a couple of good games, uh, but have some fairly bad losses as well. So I don't like think he will do poorly, but I don't think he will do too well either. So like he's barely, I don't think he fits into either category, but I think he's not quite ready yet to, to make the leap. And I think it's probably more likely that he has a bad event than a really good event. But good experience either way. Okay, so now it's the turn of Abasov, maybe the surprise package qualified from the World Cup last year. He's the underdog Magnus. Do you think he can continue surprising a few people? Well, Abasov obviously had an amazing tournament at the World Cup. Whether he can replicate it, it's very, very hard to believe. I think if he gets off to a good start, that can limit, limit the damage severely, but Overall, I think um, he's most likely going to, to suffer. You could see it with somebody like Warmadam at Tata, who started off extremely well, and then usually when once you start losing, it's hard to stop the bleeding if you are like a considerably weaker player than the others, which I think Abbasov unfortunately is. So I think, yeah, he will uh, not have it easy. But I think it's really hard just to be there. Yeah, fair enough. And uh, next, it's the turn of Pragnananda. I know you've been impressed by him in the past. Do you think this could be his year? I don't think Prague is ready to win the tournament, but I also cannot see it going really poorly for him. He has like mo he has weak moments, but he's like fairly stable psychologically, and he has an improving repertoire. It's very serious. So I think Prague is he's very unlikely to win the tournament, but I cannot see him having a really bad result either. 
Okay, and uh, that brings us to Fabiano Caruana, another player who has won the candidates in the past. What do you think? Is this uh, Fabi's turn to get back there to a World Championship match? I think Fabi has has a great great chance to to win. Um, I, I mean, his pedigree is, is very strong. He seems to have regained some strength in classical chess as well after he had a little bit of a down. He's not maybe not quite as good as he was at his best, which probably was in 2018. He has as good a chance as, as any, so I think he definitely belongs and likely to win. Okay, bold, Magnus, very bold. Okay, uh, now the turn of Vidit. Mm, I think Vidit has improved quite a lot, especially from more of a psychological Point. He did really poorly now in, in Prague. Prague. Yeah, which is not a great sign. It doesn't have to mean that much. I think Vidit is sort of in between tiers here. We're all, we'll do well and we'll do poorly. I, I'm sure he will be very serious, well prepared. He will not win the tournament. Although I do think like he has the capacity to, to make a really good score if things go go his way. Um, I really like like the way he um, he plays. Um, but I could also see him losing quite a few games. So he's also kind of in between categories, but I think he's more likely to make minus four than plus three. And that brings us to Hikaru, many uh, fans' favorite player. Do you think this is his year? He's been close in the past. I think um, Hikaru's never had a better chance to to become world champion than, than this. I would say that him and Fabiano are co-favorites. Hikaru has been quite consistent recently in, in classical chess. And I, I think he has an excellent chance. So I think he belongs in the first category. Wow, Magnus, uh, good predictions. I'm actually inclined to agree with all of them. I'm slightly surprised you put Jan in the second category. Uh, I just haven't seen anything from Jan mm -hmm. for a long time. and. He didn't play that well in the World Championship match either, so I'm yet to be completely, completely convinced. But he's like he's still in the top contender group. Like he, I would say the two first are like one, one A, and then he's he's one B, and then there's like a very significant gap to the to the rest. So there we have it, candidates starting in Toronto in April. You've heard Magnus's thoughts. We'll be watching. We hope you do too.